And if I get uh, Jim and Dinah to help, help me watch that participant thing, because it's going to start blowing up here in a little bit. Yeah. Letting folks in. Yeah. Yep. You got it. Are you guys able to? Taking notes too. You want me to let people in, Joe? Yeah, let people in, and then once we get started, um, you can go to notes. I think uh, the and two. Really, no really, worries. Uh, really, Dinah, I, I I feel like this session is about the teachers, and I don't think we 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 really need to take notes un, un, unless you want to. Uh, you know, let's just let it run. It'll be on the on YouTube channel. I mean, they can watch it because the uh, roundtable. You know, it's it's reports from 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 Brad Can and from Bob Floyd and, and all that. Say no more, Mr. Egger. <laughs> <laughs> the YouTube point. live. It, the YouTube link is live, and I'm watching you guys right now. Oh, cool! I'm watching Dinah wave her hands up and down because <laughs> it's about 15 seconds behind. <laughs> So since since we still got a little bit of time, I, I'm 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 going to talk about uh, about Natalie Sanchez, who's there from from, from Westerville. Uh, you there, Natalie? You can hear me or not? I don't think she can hear me. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, all right. Natalie, actually, I I, I think I was the jazz chair in Region 15 many many years ago, and I think she was a young tenor sax player in the jazz band. When I was she, she seems very impressed with your story, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it, riveted, riveted. She, she's just concentrating right now so hard on on that tenor sax part that she must have been playing. And I was what I know one of the years the clinic was was always during football season, and one year and it might have been her. I was going to ask her that. One of our uh, saxophone players was also the homecoming queen. And so she had to leave the Friday night rehearsal early to be crowned. Wow. That is great. Hey, John Taylor. How you doing? You're muted, John. John. Well, whatever you're saying, John, is, it's brilliant, I'm sure. Yeah, I know. No, I was just going to say, what a memory, Jim. How does he remember all that stuff? I don't right. know. It's the stupid things that, that I remember. The important things. Can't remember what you did yesterday, right? No, I can't. <laughs> Let me get that link. And Dinah, this link that you sent, that's the one for the the um, certificate, correct? Just head nod, you're mute. Was it? It's the one for the uh, information and I will distribute their certifications. Okay, but you can't get, I was gonna give it to my person and for the YouTube chat because you don't have access to the youtube chat okay. so if that if this if that's it then i'll hang on to it and i'll drop that's it in it. the youtube that's chat. it okay. thank you and, it, and it's working it's beautiful okay great I'm, I'm sure it was my video that i made for you that made it all it, it, i'm going to talk about it tonight as soon as we're going to the part. <laughs> i cannot wait it's it's profound i bet Marina Kingston, there's a rule that anyone who's, who, who shows up with an instrument has to play for everybody. I just finished my sectionals. Let me put this down. <laughs> <laughs> I came home with a saxophone neck strap on today. No one told me. I was wearing my keys around my neck and no one told me that I had accidentally left my neck strap on for most of the day. I didn't realize till I got home. <laughs> yeah, that's a badge a, of honor. I don't know how many hundreds of times I've done that. It's just a really serious lanyard. That's all it is. Just a really serious one. I think Karina was just trying to prove to Jim that she's still working. Yeah, she is. She's smart. <laughs> that's neat. We do have people on the YouTube channel too. <laughs> Always on the clock. Always. This is cool, Jim. So we have, uh, hey, cool. We have people from PSJA yeah. here on the on the YouTube chat. So I'm watching the YouTube right now too, which is neat.
I'm just making some notes real quick. What is the certificate called again? CPE, right? Yes. T T yeah, CPAC, and it's a, the not the CPAP, the, the, the T Mac technology. <laughs> Can y'all hear the clarinet in the background? No. <laughs> okay. That's my, my son. Hello, Ariana. How are you doing today? Ariana, can you catch the admin? I'm doing good. Oh. How are you? I'm good. Hey, listen, I, I tried to pop into your class today and I couldn't get in. So sometimes I, I, yeah. I need to check the I need to switch yeah. those links now. Sorry, yeah. And let me ask Michael Isidore how his mom and dad are doing. Michael's from, from Fort Van, pretty incredible. There's hey. Michael. Looking more and more like, like your dad, Michael. Oh sorry about that. It's the hairline. Yeah, yeah, I know. So how's it going, sir? It's going one day at a time. That's wonderful. But my parents are doing great. They're in Kerrville. Great. Um, you know, try not to get too near people with his myasthemia. So yeah. Well, that's great. Well, we'll tell them hi for me. I, I will. Yeah, great people. Tell them how your mom uh, pronounces orchestra. Um, orchestra. 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 That's my orchestra. dad, actually. It's my yeah. dad. My dad says orchestra. Orchestra. Because of the whole uh, Yankee upbringing, he uh, doesn't pronounce H's when they're printed, and he adds them when they're not printed. So. He's a great guy. Love him to death. And, and your mom, too. Hi, Mr. Taylor. So nice to see you as well. Good to see you. Yeah, guys, we're, we're going to wait just a few more minutes to try, try to get more, more people going. Uh, but th this is going to be really exciting. I mean, y'all are going to be blown away with uh, the stuff you're going to learn. And we're so happy that y'all are joining us today, both on uh, the Zoom meeting and on, on YouTube Live. Really exciting. Uh, Miss Menger, is should there be a clickable link in your uh, post, your chat post? I think you've you you just sort of grab it and then throw it on uh, in a window and it opens up on the internet. Mm. And if one of you, you young guys can uh, figure out how, how to turn it into a clickable link in the chat, that'd be great. For YouTube, is that what you said? For the- uh, For oh, there CP. It is. There Google it form. Is now. Yeah, there was no uh, actual form there now, but it's there now. Hi, so the link you shared is actually to the Zoom meeting. That's how I joined. Sorry. <laughs> I can let myself leave. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. That's probably my fault. Sorry about that. <laughs> I grabbed it from that, probably the wrong email. I'll grab it. Let me go get to Jim's. I I think we're fine, Joe. I, okay. I don't think we reached the, the 500 limit. No problem. Pass, I would have I would have been offended by being called old, but this technology has taught me that, that. <laughs> I am old. I don't understand any of this technology stuff. I I think we're fine, Joe. I don't All right, fifteen second delay. No problem. Yeah, so I'll so I'll give it about three or four more minutes. By being called old, but this technology has taught. 
It's all right. And if you guys remember, if you have that 15 second delay, you can right click up on the tab of your Internet Explorer or your Google Chrome and then right click and then hit mute on that tab at the very top. If you have that bolt. Natalie, I had to take a technology class when I was in college in the 70s. We learned how to use an overhead projector and a thermofax machine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Things have changed. A little bit. That's great. We're about 60 right now, 60 almost. On the YouTube? No, both. Uh, yeah, yeah, 37 on that, and then there's 30 people watching on YouTube also. So Linda Holcup, is it Linda with us or is it Gene stealing Linda's phone? It is me. <laughs> Must be Gene. I'm joking. All right. Just a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll start. I wanna thank you all for joining us today. I, I, I think it's gonna be a great event. Well, Joe and Dinah, should we start? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's 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 get going. All right. So uh, I'm I'm Jim Egger, the director of fine arts for McAllen ISD, and I'm also the the president of the Texas Music Administrators Conference. And uh, we also have have with us Joe Clark from Spring ISD, who's our vice president, and Dinah Menger from from Fort Worth ISD, who, who's who's our secretary. And uh, this is something brand new that we're trying and, and if it works and y'all like it, we will keep it going. Uh, this is our uh, TMAC Educator Series and it's being streamed live on, on our TMAC uh, YouTube channel. And it will be there forever. And our one in two weeks that's, that's, that, that will concentrate on elementary music and art will be there as well. Uh, so uh, let us know if it's something y'all like. And if it is, help us find folks to to present because it's it's all about connecting people and, and uh, helping each other be as successful as possible. Today is is our very first one. It's TMAC presents Tech Talk with Teachers, and we have three outstanding music ed educators who are gonna teach us about tech. So with us today is um, Amanda Blackstone from Tibbet Middle School in Georgetown ISD, and we also have Christian Dela Cruz, uh, the choir director at Reagan High School Northeast ISD. And we also have Scott Norman from Westfield ISD Band Director from Spring. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna start with Amanda. Amanda, it's all yours. Yay, well, thank you so much for having me and kudos to everyone who's watching this because I know that technology has been all over the place lately and it's on our minds. So just kudos to everyone listening in. A um, little bit of background about me. So I work at Tibbet Middle School in Georgetown. This is my first year there, and it's also my first year as a head band director. Um, it's quite the year to get to know students that you've never seen in person before. Um, but so far, it's been going really well. Also, I'm the executive director of YBDT, which stands for Young Band Directors of Texas, which is a professional organization, nonprofit, for any young band directors in our state to get some community, get some support and some resources as well as a little bit of mentorship and help you stay in the game long-term. So if you're interested in that, uh, hit me up. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started sharing my screen. All right. 
So as I mentioned, my background is in middle school band and I see that it's loading right now. It'll pop up in just a second. But since um, I only have experience with middle school so far, um, I will say that I have learned that the simpler, the better, even when it comes to technology. So as I've been planning things, especially with my remote learning, um, I've been challenging myself and my assistant to come up with a plan and then say, okay, great. Now, how can we make it simpler? And then we come up with that plan and we say, that's great. Now, how can we make it even simpler? And that's really for us and for the kids, because we've definitely had some outcries from students and parents saying it's just too much. It's too many systems. It's too many things. And so we just try and challenge ourselves in the band program to keep everything very simple. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And just so you know, um, my current situation at uh, tip it is we do have some students on campus. We have some students at home and if they are at home, it's completely asynchronous. So we don't check in with them at a certain time every day and um, we are not allowed to use Zoom. So we use Google Meet if we do need to check in with a student. So today I wanted to talk about three of my old uh, tip it is we do have some students on campus. We have some students so three of my all time favorite tools that I use, and honestly, I use, don't check in with them at a certain time every day. And um, I use it in a normal year or in a um, COVID year. Uh, they work both times. So I just want to with the very first one, which is something called Canva. So Canva is a website. The reasons why I love it, first of all, it's free. Second of all, it's very easy to use, especially if you access their templates. Um, and third of all, it makes teaching tools more engaging and kid-friendly. So I'm a big fan of colors. I'm a big fan of different fonts and bold prints and just anything that can make what's on the page or what's being sent out more engaging for the person who's viewing it. Um, I find that it also gets more attention just from really anyone that's looking at it. So the kids, they can look at a black and white piece of paper and they'll it'd be just fine. But if you're sending out something and you want it to get some extra attention, just like back in the day when you would send home, you know, a print up on a yellow piece of paper instead of white because it was important. Um, it's the same thing with this, but I, I would say to the next level. So here's some examples of some things that I've created with Canva. So first of all, on the left hand side of your screen, you have my saxophone embouchure guide. Now it might shock you to know that this probably took me 10 minutes or less to create. And that's because I used a template. So basically what I did went on to canva.com, selected the template that had the shapes that I was looking for. So I wanted something that had four windows for four steps. I wanted something that could include pictures. And I basically just chose something that already had the structure that I needed. So that all I had to do was plug in the information. So picked my template, typed in my steps, my information, used my cell phone to take pictures of my own mouth. That's why the teeth are so crooked. Um, <laughs> I used my cell phone to take pictures of myself and just plugged those pictures directly into the template that was provided on Canva. It's a drag and drop process and it's really simple. But what I like about this is it can be saved in PDF, which can be easily viewed on a mobile device. So I print this up for my kids. I do a big old beginner packet for every um, instrument that has tons of pages that are that look kind of like this, but I also save them as individual PDFs so that if a kid is having an issue with their embouchure, for instance, I can snag that PDF and send it to them directly in email or Google Classroom or something and say, hey, pull this up and take a look at it. Look at these steps again. Now, not as great as being able to sit down four inches from their face and tell them exactly what to do, but it is nice to have that quick answer. And the PDF form allows for them to view it without really having to scroll quite as much. They can zoom easier, just things like that. It, PDF helps with. And Canva makes it really easy to save things in different file formats. So also on the right-hand side, you have another example of something else that I created. Don't know why I picked two saxophone examples. I don't know, but it's there. I like it because it has colors and I like it that it has different fonts and you would be surprised how much more kids will grab onto something like this if I say, oh, it's the one with the cursive writing. 
you know, they know which one to pull up. And it's just something tangible that they acknowledge, you know, that it's, it draws them in a little bit more. And it actually makes my lessons go a lot faster than if everything was printed times new Roman, black and white, that kind of thing. Um, so these are just two templates that is an example. Then this next slide are some other things that I've created and used in my program. So on the left hand side, we have the supply checklist. And as you can see, it's like a slightly fancier than your average supply checklist. But once again, I saved it as a PDF so that parents would be able to pull it up on their phone when they go to the music store, scroll in and out, zoom in and out and be able to view it. Um, I also like that it comes in our school colors because I like to really drive home that they are part of the Tippet Band family from day one. And that means everything they receive day one is like, you know, red, white, and navy. Like, welcome to the family. These are our colors. This is what we do. And you might think that something like that is not so important, but you'd be surprised when we start doing competitions and we have navy team, we have red team, we have silver team or white team that kids start like hanging on to little things like that. Then in the middle at the bottom, um, this is a really helpful teaching tool, especially this year, is on Canva, you can load in a picture and add shapes and text and stuff onto that picture really easily. I'm telling you, this is easier than publisher. It's easier than like Word or Paint or something like that. And so for this one, we did a very basic instrument parts quiz. So took a picture of the case, slapped some numbers on top of that picture and then created a Google Forms quiz that just said name part number one, name part number two, and kids would just fill it in like that. And it probably took, you know, for every single instrument, I want to say it took, what, 20 minutes to make all those pictures ready to go, um, which these days with distance learning, I really am like timing myself on how long tasks take because in person, it would take way less than 10 minutes. You would just open your case and literally point to the different parts and it would be done. But now you're having to find a way to, you know, to communicate that differently. Then on the, on the right-hand side, this is an example of a social media post that you can also create on Canva. Um, I love their social media templates because they are fast, they're easy, and they're perfectly formatted. So you can, on canva.com, you can select, I want to make an Instagram post. I want to make a Facebook post. You don't have to be good at social media um, to click on that button and plug in what you want to share. And I've found that a lot of our students, maybe they're not checking their email, maybe they're not checking their Google Classroom, but somehow they're still checking our Instagram. So, you know, just catch them however you can. Um, then the second tool, I realized as I was creating this presentation that this one's actually my favorite, and that is Google Forms. Um, even if your district doesn't use Google a lot, I would still suggest creating like a free Google account for your program, band program, choir program, whatever, and start digging into Google because, oh man, it, it's life-changing, I'll tell you that. I love Google Forms specifically, number one, because it works for gathering information from parents, students, or staff. I can easily share Google Forms with really anyone and they know how to, how to do it. Um, you can also create spreadsheets. You can have auto grading, which saves a ton of time and it's a very shareable link. So if you're looking to just get something done real quick, you can copy that link over, send it to someone and they can, they can follow up very easily. So I just wanna highlight some of the settings that are available. Like I said at the top, the magic is in the settings. Honestly, if you were to open Google Forms and decide to use it for the very first time, you would probably be disappointed because if you're not clicking around and opening the options that are in there, you're really missing out on a lot of the features available to you. So like it took me probably a year of using Google Forms before I realized that you can create quizzes that are automatically graded. This year that has helped me so much because any like quick knowledge check that we've had, especially with, um, especially with our beginners, you know, parts of the instrument, like I mentioned, note names, rhythms, things like that. I send it out as a quiz, they take it, they automatically get their grade and I've communicated to them, if your grade is below this point, you have to do it again do it until you get a certain grade. And then when I go to open my grade book and transfer it into, you know, our official grade book, 
I'm pleased to see a lot of 100s um, that wouldn't have been there before. It would have been, oh no, you know, little Johnny got a 20 on this because he didn't understand the instructions. Now I got to contact him, which is incredibly difficult sometimes. I got to contact him and tell him to redo it. And then we got to get it redone again. You know, you know how that goes. So the auto grading is really nice, especially if you let the kids see the grade that they received and then communicate to them that they need to redo it. Then on the bottom part, you can see what I was talking about with the um, shareable link. There's actually five different options to share on Google Forms. And, you know, if you didn't know what some of these icons meant, you might not know how to share it. So there's an email icon, there's a hyperlink icon, that's the one that's highlighted in purple. There's um, an embedding code icon that you can embed a form directly into your like website, for instance. And then there's also social media um, options on the side. My favorite is the link though, because anybody with any sort of tech savvy level can click a link. And sometimes I will just send, you know, an email to especially parents and I'll just say, hi, parents, you know, thank you so much for your support. I just need you to click below and I will put in bold, click here and just have the link ready to go. And that has gotten so much information into our system very quickly. So I highly recommend click here. Emails are the best kind. Um, the reason I say that it's brought a lot of information into our system is because I almost everything that I receive through Google Forms, I immediately turn into a spreadsheet. You'll see on the top left that there's this green icon that's circled. Once again, if you don't know what the icon looks like, you might not know the possibilities that are right at your fingertips. So this green um, Excel sheet icon, basically Google sheet icon, you click on it and it immediately creates a spreadsheet of the data that you're receiving and puts it in your Google Drive ready to go with a very clear um, title of what you're receiving and then it says responses. And that has been awesome. I actually use this for a lot of different things in my program, but my favorite thing so far is this year we switched to an online practice record. And so I have a Google form embedded in my band website and every Tuesday the kiddos have to get onto the website fill out the form and submit it. And then I just go to this one spreadsheet. So I check one spreadsheet for all of my students, for all of my classes, and I just knock it out in one grading session. And it's very nice. I used to do papers turned in and crumpled and, you know, having to track them down and things like that. But I don't think I'm going to go back after using this system. And then the last thing is you can also use Google Forms for recording assignments. And so they can, kids can attach a video or an image to a Google form. And so I've been using that for recording assignments. I know there are lots of different ways to send in recordings, but since our district uses Google very heavily and I felt like the steps were really simple um, with this system, we've just been sticking with it and it's been working really well. I will say with the files uploaded, there is a file size limit with Google forms just be aware of that when you're when you're creating your assignment, just set the settings to a larger file size if you can so that it can accept anything that your students are sending in. Also, I kind of like to use that as an excuse to urge my students to make their recordings brief because I have some kiddos who like to, you know, show me their puppy and tell me about their day and their video and I say, hey, that file is not going to fit in my Google form so you need to cut it down and just just give me the meat and potatoes, please. <laughs> and then the last um, tool that I want to share with you guys is there's two different ways that I've used it, but it's the newsletter. So I've used more newsletters and I've also used constant contact. The reason why I love sending out a newsletter, number one, it stands out from the standard parent email. Number two, it's easily added to a program website. And number three, there are translation options. So I have found that this year specifically, um, parents are getting so many emails that like maybe in the past, they only got emails from, I don't know, the band directors and the coaches or, you know, just a, every once in a while, a little request for something to get done. But now they're getting district updates all the time. They're getting updates from tons of teachers. If their notifications are, are set a little bit off, they could be getting an update for like every assignment that is hitting their student's desk. And so, of course, they're starting to 
tune it out as any of us would. But I have found that if I send out an email and I title the subject line newsletter, so I'll say TMS band August newsletter, I have found that it gets a lot of views and I usually get a lot of questions and responses to it just because I think they're skimming through those emails and finding, you know, newsletter really stands out to them. And we have a lot of a strong population that speaks Spanish. I don't speak Spanish very well. And it's nice that these both of these companies offer translation options. So they I don't know how good quality the translation is. I'm going to tell you right now, but it's better than nothing um, that you can, they can pull up your newsletter and translate it into another language. So here's what the S'more newsletter looks like. And some of the, you know, just notes about S'more is that it's translation capable. You can embed it in your website. That's what we do for my program. There are seasonal backgrounds and it's geared towards educators. I feel like S'more is very streamlined. You don't have a lot of as much creative, creative options, but it's like, if you want to just plug and chug with the information you need to get out to everybody, then it's a good option for sure. Then the other one that I've used oops, yeah, is Constant Contact. And I use this for our YBDT um, newsletters. And the strengths with this one is, I feel like it's a cleaner format. There aren't as much ads and like distractions around the border of the newsletter. And it looks really good in email. You can also preload your contact information into Constant Contact and um, it'll send it for you like from their engine. So you don't have to link and embed and things like that. Um, and so I really like constant contact a lot for that reason, especially when I started the year and I told parents, look, we know that when your child was in kindergarten, you signed up with all your email addresses because you wanted all the information. Now, if you maybe don't just tell us the one email you want us to use or two emails you want us to use, let's pare it down. And that's who we're going to contact. And this would be the perfect service for that because you just load in the email address and you don't have to, you know, it, it's already in there and you can send it to exactly who you're looking to send it to. You can also split up your contacts into groups, kind of like on, on charms. Okay. So this is a kind of my favorite slide because it's tips for maintaining your sanity. Um, I have a lot of friends who are doing the same thing that I'm doing right now, just trying to figure out how to, um, you know, make the bulk of your time be actually teaching and trying to reduce all the extra because the extra can be suffocating if you're not careful. So the first thing would be to manage your notifications. If you're getting emails from every little thing, you know, I'm in some Google classrooms for like the counselors on my campus and other teachers on my campus that I really don't need to know about unless they tell me I need to know manage your notifications. And if there are emails that you're getting that you do not need, unsubscribe and get out of those. Also streamline your grading. My suggestion is if you have people at home and, and in person, so far I've been having my in-person students also submit all their assignments online. That way all the grading happens in one place. And it's been working well for me with time management wise and the kids are doing okay. If they miss an assignment, I can just obviously catch them up in person, but it helps to keep the playing field even and save a little bit of time. Also scaffold your material. So we have really unique opportunity this year to maybe not um, put pedal to the metal quite as much. Um, at least my region is not doing all region this year. And since they chose not to do that, I'm like, sweet. So I created a Titan Technique Throwdown competition very um, easy to start off with and then it gets harder and harder and the kids are earning points and I'm going to shamelessly give them soda and candy when they win that kind of thing um, and that is something that I didn't have an opportunity to do before but I didn't know how kids were going to be doing coming out of quarantine so I wanted to scale it back and really find something that was very scaffolded and make deadlines work for you if a bunch of kids have not turned something in extend the deadline period. And last thing that works great for my program, and I'm going to keep it forever and ever, is virtual parent meetings. We had a parent meeting at the beginning of the year for returning band students and for new band students, two different meetings. Keep in mind, these parents have never met me before, or my assistant, or both new on campus, and they're meeting us for the first time, you know, through a screen. 
but it actually went really well. We saw a ton of people kind of got to see, you know, their house too, which would in a way kind of gave you more information about them. And we recorded the meeting so that we were able to send out the link to that recording after the fact for anyone who could not attend. And honestly, I think that got more information communicated than, you know, the traditional come to the band hall, let's all crowd in together and talk about how this year is going to go. So I'm keeping that. And then the last thing is just when in doubt, pick up the phone. You know, we definitely have students who are MIA uh, for whatever reason. And I just call and call and call and call. And, you know, I'm saying that some people are already really used to that. They're nodding their heads like I already do that a lot. But I will say I've noticed that young teachers are particularly afraid to call. Um, we're used to texting. Let's be real. And so you just got to call pick up the phone and call about any little thing. If they're stressing you out over something, call them and talk about it. Yeah. Amanda, I don't know if you can tell, but you have a lot of head nods. Oh, <laughs> so okay. as you're going through, I, I know you can't see because we're sharing screen and we, we're going to move on to the to the next person too. But like, there's all these people taking notes and every time you make a big point, I'm watching their faces. And so it's very, very much appreciated. Oh, Amanda, this is, this is fantastic. You do have a lot of questions, Amanda. So I want to invite you, if you don't mind, to please stay on and obviously and, and catch up with the, the chat and then um, just put you, uh, you can catch up and do the, the questions in there too at the same time. Amanda, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. Before we do, I do wanna remind, a uh, quick reminder from Dinah um, that we do have CPE credit for you guys tonight. So there's a lot of people watching on YouTube and there's a lot of people watching here on the Zoom. Both are fine. So I just dropped the chat, uh, the link back to the CPE credit in the chat. Um, and then also to our guest panelists, to uh, Scott and Christian, also um, you guys can answer um, questions in the chat too. So feel free to ask questions in the Zoom chat or the YouTube chat for those of you guys watching on YouTube. All right, without any further ado, uh, please uh, help me welcome Christian De La Cruz from Reagan High School, the choir director in Northeast ISD. Thank you so much for being here, Christian. Are you ready? Hello. Are you set? Yes, yeah, super excited. Awesome. Tell me if you need anything, but the floor is yours. All right. I appreciate it. There we go, sharing my screen. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christian Del Cruz. I'm one of the three choir directors at Reagan High School in San Antonio. This is my 11th year of teaching. The last 10 have been at Reagan. We have been teaching virtually now for seven weeks and are now in the fourth week of hybrid teaching where three fourths of our students are online and one fourth of our students are in person in our class uh, classroom simultaneously. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to first state that technology will only ever be a tool to help facilitate the actual reasons why students decide to log in and show up each day. It will never replace that reason. And that reason is you. Even my five-year-old daughter, Rose, when asked about her day of virtual school, exclaimed, Mrs. Bacon has two dogs. Cool, but what did you learn during math? Oh, 10 plus two equals 12. But Miss Bacon also said she liked the bow I was wearing today. It is really about your personality, your teaching method, your words of encouragement, and how you make your students feel that will keep them coming back to learn. That being said, I'd like to go quickly through some of the technological tools that I use every day for every class. I am attaching a link to a Google Doc landing page in the chat. It should be in there. Uh, and, but, but you can follow along with it and save it for future reference. It contains all the links that you will need uh, for any of the topics that I talk about today. For those, uh, for those of y'all watching live, the link is tinyurl.com slash uh, uppercase T-M-E-A-C D-L-C, T-M-A-C D-L-C. You can also use the QR code on the screen right now with your phone or just uh, type it in into your URL. I try to start every day by letting everyone in the Zoom meeting at least one minute in before the bell rings. This way they can connect their audio and video before the start of the actual class. Next, I remind the kiddos to check in using a Google form. Oh, Amanda, Google forms are life. It's everything. Uh, I've given you guys a copy of one of the, my Google forms, which is the first link on the landing page. That is yours to keep and edit and make copies of. Once you click and make a copy of it, it's, you can change it up. You can import questions and create new ones and rename it to fit your program. Go ahead and take a look at that example in the check-in. Every day a student logs in and they click on that link. 
they all, all of the forms contain an SEL component so that I can track how the students are doing mentally and emotionally. Just look at these adorable otters. I mean, come on. And they answer one of those questions they, and they can say, uh, you know, how are you feeling today? And then I ask them uh, to, to explain why they chose D and F. And a lot of times they'll say, I'm tired, but sometimes they'll say, my mom's sick or uh, my dad lost his job. And it helps me to frame my lesson for, for the next time that I meet with them. Um, we change out that picture once a week to keep it fresh. This week was all about pumpkins. Next week, uh, we're in Texas, so who knows? It might be a scorching summer theme. I also like to add a question or two to check for understanding. Uh, it can be as simple as, how close are you to turning in your sofage homework? Or did you purchase your t-shirt yet? Or write a B-flat harmonic scale uh, in, you know, in letter names. And, and then sometimes even for my AP music theory students, I'll say, time yourself before you start this question, then tell me how long it took you. That's a really great indicator for me to see how fast they're getting something. The kids are trained to go to the Google Classroom and at the beginning of class. And while they start filling out their check-in form, I play a YouTube video uh, every day at the start of every class. I've shared a link uh, to a collection of YouTube videos that we've played this year. That is number two on the landing page. Most are about choir, but some are just inspirational videos. All the classes see the same videos. This is a great time for me to take attendance, let late people into the Zoom room, get my mind ready, spray down the chairs if I forgot to spray down the chairs. Um, after the three to six minute uh, long video plays, we spend another minute or so talking about it. I always try to give them my perspective while trying to simultaneously tie it into something relevant. Like one day I used the video with the choir that performed the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's royal wedding singing Stand By Me. I pointed out their amazing facial expressions because we were about to film and submit our own virtual choir videos. And I wanted the kids to be cognizant of their own faces. It is important to know that when you're sharing your screen, your mic will lag behind the video. So usually I just turn my, uh, my mic on mute and turn off my camera during this time. Here's a clip of the very first video we showed. All right, I'm excited about this. Here we go. Let's see, I'm just gonna drag it there. <laughs> Come on, regardless of the lag, regardless of the choppy video, everyone who sees that gets excited. And so they're ready to learn. It's a great way to start the day. So I try to find all these YouTube videos. There's about 26 on there right now. I'll keep adding more. Every time we add a new video, I'll put a new one in. I also wanted to show you all that video uh, because I really wanted to do a quick shout out to McAllen ISD Fine Arts. That's where uh, uh, my wife and I grew up. And thank you guys so much for our amazing middle school and high school experiences. We wouldn't be where we are today without our amazing teachers from uh, McAllen Fine Arts. So next, after that video, we do warm-ups. It is imperative that you have the right audio settings on Zoom. I have a tutorial video for sound settings that I've shared with y'all to stop the suppression of background noise and so on and so forth. It is number three on the landing page. It's a pretty long video. Uh, the microphone is also a key component. We have these amazing Blue Yeti Blackout Edition USB microphones. We love it because it has this omnidirectional setting. And I'll show you a picture of that video or that picture. It's got that omnidirectional setting in the back, the little knob, which is the, the single circle. This allows you to pick up all the ambient noise in the room, such as the piano, your voice, and even a Bluetooth speaker. So when I play the piano, so it goes, let me see your hand signs. Me, four, tall vowels. So, 
Okay, and so you can hear me singing, you can hear me playing all simultaneously, and I can put a Bluetooth speaker behind and 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 be blasting a song and playing their part on the piano and singing another part, uh, and it's legit. It is kind of pricey. We have a phenomenal booster club. Um, these are like three hundred dollars a piece, and we bought them at Walmart, but it's worth every penny. So if you've got a little bit left in your uh, in your budget, please Blue Yeti blackouts. We've we love it. Um, Next, we move to our rhythm drills. For rhythm instruction, uh, we use a mix of kinesthetic motions that we call the Reagan rhythm method. Uh, it's a it's a move. Uh, it's like a tangent off of the Eastman system, um, and then we have adjusted it to add kinesthetic motions. That way, I can see physically on my. I can fit about fifty kids on my Zoom screen, um, and so I can see if they're getting their uh, the concepts. And for technology, we use Google Slides, which is, which is essentially the Google version of PowerPoint. Let's take a look at those slides really quickly. So I'm going to move over here. And this is the landing page that you all have a copy of. And down here uh, on number four, we've got three versions of Google Slides that I regularly use. Today, we're just going to look at the rhythm. But again, when you click on them, it, you'll, it'll copy and it'll make your own. So this becomes yours. But I'll go ahead and, and go through that motion right now so that you can see. It'll ask you, make a copy? Yeah, it's your copy. You, it's all yours. And you can mess with it, and it won't mess with mine. So that's great. And uh, all I've done is I have taken uh, manipulatives and put them uh, on a Google slide. And as you'll see here on number one, it says Deal director demonstration. And then underneath is the name. And so I'd like to do a little experiment right now. Um, I'm going to go over here to the share button. I'm going to change the setting so that anybody with the link can uh, can edit it. And so, so you got to have to tell your kids, like, hey, guys, no funny business when you get on here. Um, I'm recording this on Zoom. Uh, you know, don't let me send you to virtual ISS. It's awful. So, uh, so they have to behave when they're on there. But I copy this link, and now check this out. I'm going to give you all... Uh, this link that I just copied in the chat. And I would like, oh, here's that first one, and then here's the next one. So the eight, that's Google Doc, the second one underneath. Go ahead and click on that. And uh, we have a maximum capacity of 60 people. That you Keep that in mind. I have a classroom of 84 kids, so I have to split it up. Soprano alto is in one Google slide, and uh, this tenor's bass is on another Google slide. But uh, yeah, so everybody's getting on. Oh, I see all you people on there. That's amazing. Uh, go ahead and pick a slide out that just says name and change the name to your name. So I'm going to look at number two right here, and I'm just going to put my first name, Christian. And just scroll on down, find an empty one. And, uh, you know, and so I see some people kind of doing that. Yeah, Dorina, awesome. Good job. And the cool thing is I can scroll and I can see who's actually paying attention. Alexia, that's awesome. Yeah, you found it. You changed your name. Woo. And so we can see all of the kids that are participating all the way through. And if you need more slides, you just uh, right click and duplicate and it makes another slide for you. Or you highlight multiple slides and you can duplicate 20 at a time. Uh, and so I'm scrolling through and I see uh, Dawn's on here. That's so cool. And so now what I want you guys to do is uh, to create, to rhythmically dictate the rhythm that I say. So I just want you to put on your first measure on the left side, one, two, and three, and a four. And what you're going to want to do is you're just going to drag these little puppies up, one, two, and three, and a four. And now we've created our first rhythm. And now we're going to chant that together. Here we go. And, and this is the Reagan method, so we're not going to do three, Anna. So uh, let me see all of your Zoom screens. Here we go. One, two, speak your rhythm. Let's go. One, two, take, three, talk, take, T, four. And I can see that they're clapping. I could see that their uh, time, that they're in time between their, uh, even though they're muted. Um, and and every, obviously the people that are in the room, the people at home can hear them because of this amazing mic. So they can hear the clapping. They can I can reference and say like, hey, beat three wasn't wasn't on time. It was a little bit late. Uh, and so yeah, so this is 
uh, you can do rhythmic dictation. Um, I could uh, put up a rhythm myself and we all chant it. I can scroll down and I could say, okay, Alexia, that is absolutely great. Your beat one, your beat two, your beat four is really, really good. But look, I can drag it myself and we just needed all four sounds on beat three. And everybody can see it at home. So uh, I love Google Slides a lot. And I use it for intervals. I use it for scales. Um, and yes, moving on. Uh, after that, we go to, next we go to sight reading. We have to sight read every day. It is the number one musical skill that we value in our program and with our students. We use the iPad app for four score for sight reading. You can watch my four score tutorial video on number six of the landing page. So let's do some sight reading. Here we go. Go. I'm going to share my screen now from my iPad. And so I'm going to unshare here. And I'm going to share here. And now we're ready to go. So this is now I've moved from my PC, which I've named my DLC PC, and I'm going to move to my iPad. This is my iPad. And now we're ready to sight read. And I can zoom in horizontal. And I have a, a scan of the smart books. This is the purple smart book. And we bought a classroom set, but I've scanned it so everybody can have it. And now I'm going to say, guys, the last sharp to the right is T. Your starting pitch on this G is Do. Here we go. Let's chant our rhythm. One, two, ready and chant. One, two, take three, four. One, two, take three. One, two, three, take four. One, three, four. Okay, good. We've done our rhythm. Let's chant our solfege. One, two, starts on Do. Do, mi, fa, so, do, fa, re, ti, do. Okay, fantastic. We've audiated it. Here we go. Sing your tonic triad. Do, mi, so, mi, do, so, do. Your starting pitch. Do. All right. Now, I want you guys to look ahead. Make sure that you are looking ahead. Don't just be looking at one note at a time. Make sure you're looking at least at measure two. One, two, ready, and sing. Do, mi, fa, so, do, fa, re, ti, do. Wait, I thought you guys were looking ahead. And so now I can block out and make sight reading fun. I could challenge them, force them to make their eyes go forward. Um, and, and, and then I can highlight. I could say, hey, guys, we missed this fee right here. And I can zoom in. And notice that we were on that C and we went to a C sharp. That's just a half step, guys. You overshot that. And the fact that they can see it, that they know what measure we're on, um, it makes four score incredibly powerful. And I have an entire tutorial of all those things um, available on there. And then we move to rehearsal. I'm going to skip that really quick. Just I just want to really show, uh, quickly show you um, when I make this vertical. What I love about four score is that I can have these score layers. So I can have each of them uh, highlighted. I can see my solfege. Now all of my solfege is on there. I can zoom in. And then I can have my rhythm syllables put on. I could take my solfege off so it's a little clearer. And it makes rehearsing, even with our in-person kiddos, with this projected on the screen, incredibly uh, the kids learn incredibly fast. So we are excited for work excited about this. And then the very last thing that I'm going to show you is a blank page. So these kids, uh, when we were rehearsing before on the previous screen, a lot of the kids were missing a rhythm, right? And so they're going, we play it. And I can conduct in real time because of this microphone. Ta di da da. Oh, you missed that. Okay, you missed that rhythm on measure seven. Guys, check this out. This one lolly, two lolly, then we have these three quarter notes. Look at what I'm highlighting in yellow, the start of that quarter note, the start of this eighth note, and the start of this final eighth note. That's why we have that one li la, one li la. So this becomes my whiteboard to draw on and everybody can see. If you all have any other questions, please feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the chat. I'm happy to make more tutorial videos. Thank you all so much for this time. Christian, that was amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. You got a round of applause. I just want to point out to the fact that uh, when you started to audiate and do the rhythms, uh, people were trying to catch you, uh, but they they absolutely got left in the dust. So they were, they were really trying, hand signs, everything. I saw it. And this, 
a Guerrera there there she was she was flying <laughs> and so I was kept on watching her she tried so hard bless her heart all right so uh, I do want to thank you so much and before we go to Scott Norman to finish this out uh, I want to uh, kick it over to Jim Egger he had a couple words yeah yeah something really really cool about about being a music educator is watching your students grow into just fantastic teachers so uh Amy Tanner who is uh Christian's high school choir teacher is here with us. So I, I want Amy to mic on for just, for just a second. Very cool. Well, well, yes, I'm extremely proud of him, especially since the fact when he came to me in ninth grade, he didn't know what a computer was. I, I had to start him <laughs> at the beginning of, of how to work a computer. So I'm so proud of how far he has come in all this computer stuff. And I'm so glad I'm not teaching anymore because uh, I can't keep up with three fourths of what he's saying. <laughs> Christian, I'm real proud of you. Hope you play poker with me tonight. Yeah, I'll be there. Okay, I'll look for you. <laughs> virtual will, poker. And yeah, we will, virtual. We, we will send that link out to that poker game here in the chat in a second. Uh, so please watch that, and you, we can do that on YouTube. Um, and we will all be looking for jobs later. All right, so uh, going on and to round us out, and please, before we uh, kick it over to Scott uh, to do this, everybody in YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Everybody for Zoom, thank you for being here. If this is something that you guys like and this is a benefit to you guys, please let us know. Either you guys can do likes in YouTube or let us know in Zoom, but we want to provide more services. We're here for you guys. We're here for teachers. Every finance director, every teacher on this call um, is here for you and to provide for you guys. So please um, reach out because we really do listen to you and I'm looking at all your faces. So anything we can do at TMAC to help you guys, please let us know and you will see it come up next and we can provide these services for you guys because we have access to all the master teachers like yourselves across the state of Texas. So speaking of master teachers, uh, I'm very, very proud of the one that we have at Westfield High School. Uh, Scott Norman's doing incredible things with technology. And I wish I could tell him that I taught him anything that he knows that he's about to show you. But uh, Scott Norman, please show us what you're doing over at Westfield. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, hopefully you guys can hear me and we're doing okay. I am, uh, my name is Scott Norman and I am the head band director at Westfield High School here in Spring ISD. It's in North Houston. Um, very storied program, so we're I'm incredibly lucky to have a good staff that um, is working real hard to uh, to deliver instruction to our kids right now during this time. Um, I want to go ahead and share my screen, give you guys a little bit of an idea before I start of about, I mean, just kind of like what we're going through right now and where we're at with our classes. So um, hopefully you can see that as well. Um, so again, see more possibilities using external technology for Zoom. We're going to talk about that today. Um, but one thing that I want to talk about is give you some context and maybe some of you guys, and there's my info, I'm, I'll, I'll send that stuff in the chat a little bit later. Um, so one thing that you guys can see is I want to show you kind of what we're doing right now. We have been teaching virtually uh, since August 17th. Uh, and at this point, uh, we are no longer virtual. We are hybrid. So if you take a look at this, and th if this looks super confusing to you, I'm working in it and it's confusing to me every day all day. So just take a look at this here. If you can interpret this and let me know which kids I'm going to see on which days, then maybe you can email me and let me know before school starts tomorrow. All right, Scott, well, it was great having you on today. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm when we kidding. take a look at this, we have A, B days, A's and B days. All right. We so, And we also have blocks. All right. Those are block schedules. And, but we only have a certain alpha group that's coming on each day. And we also have kids who are in person and virtual at the same time. So you have all of those layers. And I also teach the class in person to the kids who are here with me, as well as online. So what we do is we have to break up our classes quite a bit with our assistants. Um, so um, you'll notice the other thing. That, so one of our one of the ways that we do it is, and we're really lucky is that we actually have a block. We used to have traditional scheduling, which was period one through eight every day. And um, we got, uh, so for instance, all of our kids in our band classes, they get two of those periods stacked together. So my varsity band in the first semester is really the kids who have a shot at being in the wind ensemble in the second semester. They're gonna be in the seventh, eighth band and they're gonna be, they're gonna meet for an hour and a half each day. And then the non-varsity and sub non varsity groups meet during one, two. Um, and so whenever we went to block scheduling, we were really, really excited because whenever they went to block uh, A and B day, we actually, that meant we got to see all of our kids every day for an hour and a half, just like we used to. So we really didn't lose out anything there, but 
as you guys are finding out with the synchronous and asynchronous piece, um, being able to teach a lesson for an hour and a half on Zoom, especially in the afternoon uh, with those kids is, is pretty challenging. So what in high school, we have this synchronous and asynchronous piece. We do some rhythm work together in the beginning of each of our classes. But what we'll do towards the back end of the class is we will do breakout rooms in Zoom. And each one of our students, I'm just showing you an example. So my varsity group, uh, for instance, on Mondays there, uh, Mr. Skimbo is one of my assistants and we'll take the saxophones and work on all state music with them. Uh, I will take the tubas. Mr. Falcon will take the horns. Um, and then on Tuesdays, each of my students get an hour long master class uh, with a with a master teacher. So um, on Tuesday afternoons, like for instance, we have uh, all those days are master class days. Uh, Marion West teaches our saxophones and Tyann Payne teaches our clarinets and Mickey Vasquez is teaching our trumpets and Mike Warney teaches our low brass. And they do all that virtually during that class time. So we're incredibly lucky to have that. Um, and then Wednesday we split up again. And then on Fridays we have extra help with Mr. Falcon, et cetera. But we, we do all that uh, about halfway through our Zoom classes. Um, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and show you a little bit more about how we break that up so that we can do a lot of demonstrating. Uh, and I'm gonna be moving over to another setup. So like I said before, I'm a high school band director. Um, and so I am just now getting done with marching band rehearsal. That's why I'm wearing shorts. Thanks, Dr. Clark. Don't shame me. Um, and I'm also, uh, I'm also going to show you um, our, so normally whenever you're on Zoom, what you've got going on is you have um, one screen or you have yourself. You have one, like one screen that you can share unless you log on to Zoom from multiple uh, devices. So right now I'm on my work computer, which is a Dell, and it has two monitors. And I'll show you the setup later on. It looks pretty crazy. And I have a MacBook here um, to the side, and I have that with uh, two external webcams as well as an iPad Pro. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to show you a. We're going to be. I'm going to be talking today about a program called OBS, and uh, OBS is a is a software. It's free. And um, you will be able to, uh, Dr. Clark, if you can tell me if I'm showing my OBS channel. By the way. Yes, you are. Good. Um, okay, so it's getting there. Um, see if you got, you got half of it uh, okay. on mine. Uh, one second. Um, so OBS is just a software that allows you to. Can you, how about that? Is that better? Yep. There you go. Okay, so OBS is just a, is just a system to where I can put multiple inputs on the screen at one time. So if you'll see this, obviously I'm going to be pretty laggy um, just because I'm on school uh, internet right now. But um, but for for whenever you're looking at my screen, if you pin, I have my students pin me to the uh, to their Zoom, and uh, they're gonna when we start class. Normally, what I do when I start class is I uh, start with attendance, obviously. And what I like to do with my students is I like to go over the calendar. So I've got my I've got my Chrome browser over here in the upper right hand corner. I've got me in the upper left hand corner. Uh, and I've got a timer and I like to do a thing called attendance speed lap just so we start and I go ahead and recruit a helper in the zoom room who wants to be my lookout. And then that person is going to be the person that watches the chat room as I call attendance names. We try to see how fast we can get through our attendance. So in seventh and eighth period, we have 67 students and some are virtual, some are present in person. And we try to see how quickly we can go. So what I'll do is we'll start the, we start the timer. When we start the timer, we try to go through the through the attendance as quickly as possible. And like I said, we try to beat our times every day. Um, and the and the lookout will let me know. Like if somebody's not there, I'll say, "Hey, um, Adam Garza, are you here?" And then my lookout will go, "No, they're not here." Just to try to keep our time cut down. Um, and just so you know, like you're looking at what the kids are seeing, you can manipulate this any and every which way you want. So these are all. If I want to make this bigger, I can make it bigger. Um, if I want to make certain things go on top, I can make certain things go, I can reorder them, I can make them horizontal, I can change the way that I look or whatever it is. It, you, you can pretty much change all these things. Um, and I want you to just kind of know too that um, this is basically the same kind of software that you would use to run a podcast with multiple views. So from that there, I'm generally, generally once we do like a breakout room, I'll do a breakout room and activate a breakout room. So we go to maybe like a, we're going to work on maybe a study of some kind or an etude of some kind. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to be um, using, hold on just a second. 
uh, we're going to be using a couple of tools in this next portion of class. So when I move over to this section here, um, I'm going to be showing my body. Okay. And if, if I want to demonstrate, so take for instance, like maybe I'm teaching jazz band and I want to be able to uh, show the kids my hands. Okay. So what I'll have is I'll have a, a camera positioned over to the right side and that way they can see what I'm doing with my hands. All right. And that way they that, you know, if you're trying, if you're trying to demonstrate something there and then you want to show them that way while they're working on exercise, you're more than welcome to. Um, and yeah, of course it's, it's a little bit delayed. Okay, so it's a little bit delayed, but I mean, in terms of just getting them to be able to, um, getting them to be able to uh, like, if you want to demonstrate something you can. Um, and I'm actually right now, the input that you're seeing this music on, some of you band directors, I'm sure you recognize that. The input that I'm seeing that on is actually just preview on my MacBook. I, I just input preview as that, that that's the source that um, is going on in that particular scene. And if you recognize what's up in the right hand corner, that's tonal energy tuner. Um, and so you guys can use that and that will work live. And as I move on from here to like, say, if I want to go on to the next thing where I'm working on an all state etude or I want to break down an etude, I might, uh, Christian talked about this earlier. I've used four score uh, heavily, but uh, right now, just for this particular class, I'm actually using uh, an app called Notability. Um, and Notability works great on the iPad Pro because I can use my Apple Pencil. Um, and it's really, really quick. It's like, it's, it's really, really fast to be able to just mark things, but you'll also notice too, I've got two camera feeds now. So you can actually see my, obviously I'm not holding a tuba, but, um, you know, if I'm working on, uh, the Allstate jazz music with my bass player, uh, they can see my face when I'm talking to them and they can see my hands whenever I'm playing. If you're a percussionist, you can be, you can have your drum pad and your sticks right here and your face is up top. Maybe also you're a brass player and you want to change the microphone level to where uh, this is going to be more towards your face. So you can see embouchure, um, those kinds of changes. It's totally up to you. Um, and so what I'm going to do actually in just a moment is just take you through and show you. Um, so instead of showing you what the kids see, you're going to see what I see. So you can tell that it's not super crazy. Um, just so you know, this software is free um, and it's open source. Uh, so some of your tech people on your campuses are going to be a little bit squeamish um, to let you, um, you know, download it. But, um, you know, I, I, I had our tech people do it and it was pretty painless. Um, Dr. Clark, are you able to see that whole big OBS window now? Yeah, and it's a lot cleaner. Yeah, it's, cool. It's a lot more clean. Yeah, so this was the original window that I was showing you guys earlier uh, where I had uh, my calendar and I want you to see like I could move my cameras around here. Uh, all I did there was I just added in um, my inputs. So my inputs here were the iPad Pro. Uh, I added that as an input device. And when I, if I want to, I just add that as a video capture device. Um, and then the MacBook camera, as well as my webcam uh, is in the background. This window capture is capturing, you can see it highlight there, that's capturing, capturing a Google Chrome window. Um, and so like for us, we oftentimes um, in our classes, we use, um, we start the class with what's called a Bitmoji classroom. So whenever the kids log on, they click our Bitmoji classroom and they can click the links there. So I start there and that's where I might do the attendance. Um, you've got scenes, so you can set your scenes. So as I move on to the breakout rooms and go to the next item, I might hit, I'll hit study. Um, again, uh, I picked my inputs. You can have as many inputs as you want. It can be anything from cameras, the microphones, to apps, to, um, you know, preview, to, you know, whatever it is that you, you're wanting to do. It can also be um, RSS feeds. It can be preloaded videos, anything. Um, and then lastly was my other um, uh, scene is where I had two camera angles going on at once. You can see um, obviously both me and my body or whatever it is that you'd like to demonstrate. You can expand this out to as many different um, peripherals as you want. Um, and so what that means is, you know, if you wanted to, you could certainly have, uh, I, Dr. Clark and I have gotten pretty crazy with it, um, but we have certainly at one point, I think I had three GoPros, something like me and Robert Munoz had three GoPros, two webcams, four or five computers and like two iPads. Um, and so it gets pretty matrixy uh, pretty quick. Um, so I would just say, just be, just be really aware of which thing you're controlling. Um, and if you guys look now on, um, 
this is actually me holding my webcam. I don't know if you guys can see that version of me, um, but I am, but I am going to show you a little bit kind of what the setup looks like for real time. So this over here is my work setup. That's my desk with my Dell computer and my external monitor. So if you, if you guys can't see, he's, there's two Scott Normans in the Zoom channel. You got to find the other Scott Norman, not the one that's holding still. There's, find the one that's going back and forth. Right. Yeah. Find it. Find the one that's, that's uh, got the camera moving around. Where's so I, yeah, this one. So this, this, is, this is my, my work setup. That's all provided by the school. It's a really old Dell with a, a really old um, external monitor. The reason I'm saying old is not to diss Joe Clark. It's to, um, it's to highlight that you guys can run all of this stuff on really old machinery with school Wi-Fi. It's absolutely possible. Um, and then as I move over here, you'll see I've got my own, we've got our own, I've got my own personal MacBook. Guys, I'm running this on a 2011 MacBook Pro. So let yeah. that sink in. That's a 2011 <laughs> MacBook Pro. All right. And that right there is a 2014 iPad Pro. 2014. So you do not by any means need to be able to have the latest technology to run any of this stuff. You just need to be able to figure out OBS. Okay. This is great, Scott. Yeah, this is great. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for that demonstration. That's incredible. Everybody, big round of applause for Scott. I see it and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I'm watching, I, I always pick a few people to watch. So I'm watching Christian Dela Cruz and I'm telling you, I'm not playing poker with this guy because his eyes are like beaming into all this and he's soaking up all this technology, Scott. So thank you so much for that incredible demonstration. Really appreciate your time. Guys, uh, this has been great. Well, it's 6.02, so we're a couple minutes past, but um, you guys have been asking a, a couple questions on YouTube and asking a couple questions on the Zoom, so I hope we got to it. Guys, if this is something that you guys like, uh, please, please, please let us know, uh, and we're going to ta tailor this after whatever you guys want, so let us know what you guys need. Please reach out to your finance directors or to us um, specifically. Scott, and don't forget to drop your email in the chat, please. Uh, and uh, panelists, uh, please make sure that you drop your, your email. I think we got Christian Dela Cruz is definitely, um, I have his um, forms up uh, over here. And Amanda, I know we got your information there too. So make sure it's in there. Reach out to these guys and let us know. Um, so without further ado, thank you to um, the TMAC board for making this possible. So uh, I'm going to kick it back over to Jim, uh, the president. So thank you so much, Jim. Yeah, thank you so much for, for, for joining us and anything we can do to help you, we are here for you. Nothing's more important than, than, than the educators. And we're so blessed, you know, Dinah and, and, and Joe and I have been texting back and forth and we're so pleased with what the future of music education looks like. There's so many bright minds and, and so many incredible people. So, you know, you know thanks, thanks for, for joining us. Let us know what you want and, and, and we wanna help you. Uh, there's that Google form, yay, um, um, Amanda, that uh, is in the chat to get a CPE certificate. Uh, you will also, we can also send any of the uh, presentations as, as well. So if you want that stuff, you fill out the form and we'll blast it out for you. And thanks so much for joining Joe, us, China. Joe, I'm sorry, we just had something in the chat. Can we get some elementary music love? You want to talk to him about our October 15th team at? You guys are going to yeah, love what's yeah. coming up next. Yeah, so right, we have so, Jim. Jim, go ahead. Yeah, so, so two weeks from tonight, two weeks from tonight, October 15th, extraordinary teaching in, in extraordinary times, an elementary art and music panel discussion. Kathy, Kathy Cuttis from uh, Plano ISD is, is putting a team together. It's going to be amazing. So anyone who teaches elementary or, or, or wants to just learn something, join us. Two weeks from tonight, the, the fine arts directors will blast it to their teachers. It'll be the same format where, where some of you guys can, can, can join us on the Zoom meeting. And then anybody, even in other states, can, can watch on, on the TMAC channel on, on YouTube. Tonight's presentation and any other ones we have will be on the TMAC channel long-term. So, so you can go back, watch it. You can tell friends to watch it. So again, thanks for, for joining us and y'all have a great night. Yeah. Thanks, thanks so much to Amanda, Christian and Scott. Big old round of applause. Great job guys, y'all were incredible. Great job, thank you guys so much. Leave comments in the YouTube and we'll get those comments over there too if you guys have it. Uh, you guys have a great night. All right.
Scott, Christian, Amanda, thank you so much. That was yes, great. No problem. Guys, that was amazing. Another three people that I will be calling for all of my technology needs. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah.